nowadays, getting a new GPU for less than 100 dollars can be a very hard thing to do, and especially in recent times with all the GPU price situation. But going back to 2005, this was much easier to do, as for only around 50 dollars, you had the ATI X550, a card which was fairly modern at the time, running on the first generation of PCI Express. Spec-wise, it features a 128-bit memory bus with 256 MB of DDR memory. So compared to today's standards, it falls behind in pretty much any aspect. But what kind of performance could you expect from a $50 GPU back in the day? Well, let's find out with some benchmarks. General usage under Windows 7 felt pretty good, and even playing HD video was possible. Although it is visible that video playback can put quite a lot of strain on the GPU, but I suppose not many people would use this card for watching videos. I believe that most of us just want some good old retro gaming experience. So, let's jump straight into some classics. First up in the benchmark list is Return to Castle Wolfenstein, a 20 year old classic, which runs on the highest preset, with a very nice average of over 150 FPS. But considering that the game was 4 years old at the time of the car release, this is not a big surprise. Next up in the benchmark list is the original Call of Duty from 2003, which is another OpenGL based title and runs on the maximum preset with a similar resolution as Wolfenstein did. Performance wise, it does pretty fine, with a few stutters here and there, but that can of course be avoided by reducing some of the graphical settings. But even without doing that, the game runs great. Next up on the benchmark list is the original Far Cry from 2004, with an average of around 44 FPS and a few stutters here and there, running on the 720p resolution and medium settings. So although the settings need some adjustments, the game still looks great and runs very well. Another game that can be considered a classic is Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, which on the X550 needs quite a lot of adjustments in terms of graphical settings to get playable results. So in order to get a fine experience, you can use the 720p resolution, but all the graphical settings need to be turned all the way down, except for the view distance, which on the slider is set to somewhere in the middle. Playing through the game like this reminds me a bit of the PS2 version, so not a very bad experience. To finish off the benchmark list, we have Fable The Lost Chapters, running on the 720p resolution, pretty much every setting turned all the way down and giving in return a 60fps on average, and a very stable average as well. So the game doesn't look the best, but it runs very well. And you can of course turn up a bit some of the settings, but you need to sacrifice some of the frame rate. So all in all, this card was a nice entry level GPU back in the day, and if you wanted to save a bit more money, you could have gotten the X350 for just about $30, an unthinkable price for a GPU nowadays. So for a retro gaming experience, preferably under Windows XP, this can get the job done pretty well, but only in games until 2005 or so, as the titles after that period require quite a lot more horsepower to run good enough. In conclusion. This wasn't a terrible product, especially considering the price back in the day, but these cards did tend to go obsolete quite quickly, as in a bit more than a year you had the X1550 for only $40, which outperformed the X550 without a problem. Nowadays budget GPUs have come a long way in terms of longevity, and although they don't really last for more than 2 or 3 years, when it comes to running the latest and greatest titles, everything is better than having to change it in just a single year. 